This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In the previous video, we logged in to Apex as the overall administrator, and then we created a workspace. Now we're going to log in to that workspace as that workspace administrator, two different administration roles. And we're going to create two types of accounts. We're going to create an account for developers and an account for regular users. Then we will log into Apex with one of the developer accounts and take a quick overview of Apex components, particularly Application Builder and SQL Workshop. So let me emphasize here that just as in the Oracle database itself, any relational database, the administration account should never be used to build things. It's used to administer that software environment. So in Apex, we will go in as an administrator and then create accounts for people who would develop the web application. At the database level, we would create accounts for subsets of our database, such as in accounting or HR, and we would never build those tables in the actual administrator's account. So I'm going to come over to the login screen and Workspace I created is called Animal Space Shelter. You might have used something different. You could have put an underscore between animal and shelter. Then I did AS underscore admin. So I've typed in the password and it's prompting me to change the password because this is the first time I have logged in. I will make those changes, apply them, and log in. So now I'm logged in, I can always come up to the upper right corner to verify what my role is in the account I'm logged into. So the first thing I want to do is come over to the third icon from the right, and I want to manage users and groups. And I'm going to create a user, and this will be Mina. Uh, let's see. I'll do Mina Mendez all run together. I'll make up an email address. I'll fill a few things in while I pause the video. So I've given a username. I've simply made up an email address. You have to have this, but it doesn't have to actually be a valid email address. This will be for Mina Mendez. And then we're going to use the Animal Shelter Scale schema, which is at the database level, which is why you have an underscore. You can't have a space here. Is this an administrator? No. Is it a developer? Yes. And I'm going to type in the password. And on this one, after I do the password, I will select no so that Mina does not have to create a new password when she first logs in. Depending on what you want the user to do, you may select you know, enter new password on first login or not. I'll pause the video. And then I'm going to save this and create another developer and a regular user. Uh, I'll pause the video while I do the second developer. So I've created two developer accounts. I'm now going to create a testing account, a general user account, and I'll just call it testing. Whoops, let me get that right. And I'll use this if I want to log in as a regular user to see how the application appears to a non-developer. And I'll come down here and leave these settings as no. And I'll type in the password. And I will probably go ahead and switch this to no since this is all in my development of the application. For an actual end user, you might want to leave this as yes. I'll pause the video. So I have two 
developer accounts we see here and one end user account. I'm now going to log out as the administrator because almost everything I do from this point I'll want to do as one of the developers. I'll pause the video while I log out, which I can do up here. I'll sign out and I'll sign back in as Mina Mendez. So here I am, I'm Mina, I have logged in. So we see the major components of Apex listed here as icons. Notice we also see them listed above as tabs and have drop-down options. You often have more than one way to activate a particular feature in Apex. When we are ready, which we'll do here in the next video or two, and we want to create a, an application, we will come to Application Builder and do a Create. In the meantime, I want to take a quick look at SQL Workshop. In Team Development, you actually have the ability to create tasks, lists of things to do, assign responsibility to the developers, and have developers indicate when something is completed, if it's 50% complete, 80% complete, or 100%. I've highlighted that in previous videos. I'm not going to use that in this video series, but be aware that you have a nice built-in feature for tracking activities and assigning responsibility to teams in a development environment. You also have some pre-built applications that you can install if you're just trying to get a handle on what you can do with Apex. I won't be using those. We're going to build from scratch. So we know we're going to work with Application Builder and a lot with SQL Workshop. In the next video, we're going to use SQL Workshop to run some scripts and get some tables and data into our schema at the database level so we have something to work with as we build our application. So if I come into SQL Workshop right now and I could click it here or look at the subcomponents here. Object Browser, this is going to give you a view of the actual database objects, which right now there aren't any. If I click on it, you'll see that I have no tables. If I click Views, I have no views. If I go down the list, I'm not going to find anything. If I want to run single SQL commands, Structured Query Language Commands, then I can do that in this environment. So I can come in here and type in a simple SQL command. So I run this command and no data found. Why? Because I'm asking for a list of table names and I have no tables. Again, in SQL Workshop, I can run scripts, and you'll be doing that in the next video so that we build some tables immediately and have some data. So when we create forms, reports, we'll actually see how those function. There are utilities you can use in the utilities. I can upload data. We'll do that in a few videos from now. And we will not be working with RESTful services. So in the next video, we'll get started and run some commands to actually build database objects that we can then use when we build the web application. Remember the naming conventions for related videos in this tutorial series. The Apex videos are 00 through 12, 14, whatever, however many videos there are. If there's a related database video for a specific video, let's say I've at Apex 02, then that name is going to be, for the database, is going to be Apex 02 DB, and then the number of that video series. Because for this one Apex video, I might end up having two or even three videos about the database concepts. There'll be some Apex videos that have none of these, but this is how you can access the database videos specific to that Apex video. And the same thing would go if I have Apex, let's say 03, I have something specific I want to cover in SQL. That would be SQL and 01 through SQL 03. So I would have 1, 2, 3. All of these relating to the Apex video 03. 
Hopefully that'll help.